Hello. Thank you for letting me do this long distance and keeping my carbon footprint down. Also for making me the first woman to receive a Lifetime Achievement Award from Division 32. That means a lot to me, so thank you. In accepting this award, I would like to propose a future-oriented, transformative mission for humanistic psychology that would explicitly take on the role of helping humanity adapt in healthy ways to the challenges of the 21st century. To think of ourselves not only as theorists and practitioners on the scale of individuals, but also as transformative leaders helping to cultivate new ways of being needed to live fulfilling lives and be effective in an emerging culture that is not like anything we've ever seen before. Friends, Humanity and the planet we inhabit are under immense pressure. We live in what sociologist Sigmund Bauman terms liquid times. There's virtually no area of human life not being profoundly disrupted by the cascade of systemic and revolutionary changes of the last decades. For the last 20 years, I've been part of a group exploring the implications for psychological capacity of the massive changes and what our responses as individuals and as a culture might be. What we are finding is both deeply troubling and faintly hopeful. Cultures are unraveling and this is causing great mental suffering. But at the same time, in the turbulence may be found seeds of a new civilizational direction that might be more human and more sustainable. We identify at least three different levels of crisis. There's a conceptual crisis, a cultural crisis, and an existential crisis. And by existential, we mean existence of the planet. The simultaneous disruption of coherence in all these levels means that this is not only a crisis within Western civilization, but it's a crisis of Western civilization as the world transitions from one framed by the assumptions of the Enlightenment and the Industrial Revolution to something else, though we don't know what. Gramsci referred to the state as an interregnum. In his prison notebook in the 1930s, he warned, when the old is dying, but the new cannot be born, morbid symptoms appear. In Gramsci's time, the morbid symptoms were fascism, totalitarianism, nihilism and Nazism, and of course, ultimately, the Holocaust. 20th century institutions are struggling to fulfill their missions within the 21st century. The context of complexity, uncertainty, competing narratives, overwhelming demands, and shrinking resources. They invest more and more on control, data gathering, accountability measures, predictive analytics, risk management, and employee training. Yet they receive less and less in return in terms of increased productivity and employee morale. Nor is government much help as its structures are immobilized by ideological polarization so that people across the political spectrum are losing faith in any and all authority. This is especially true among the young. Societal incoherence and the mismatch between our mental capacities and the changing circumstances is eroding collective readiness to respond effectively to the looming challenges of our times. And the problems of today are not simple. Ethnic divisions, climate change, poverty, healthcare, pandemics, migration, ecosystem disruption, and on and on have no easy answers. People, wherever they are, find themselves being asked by circumstances to make sense of things and to make decisions and to take action using conceptual frames, values and ethics, constructions of reality that were developed for another simpler era. This leads to a context of radical uncertainty, ambiguity and instability. And this is generating extreme distress. We should not be surprised then that according to the World Health Organization, 
the world is experiencing a mental health pandemic in which as many as one in four people, both children and adults, are suffering from a diagnosable level of mental illness. There is an increase in suicide, disorders of identity, anxiety, depression, addiction, sexual violence as people struggle and often fail to find coherence in a context that doesn't permit it. Western culture appears to now be at an inflection point, poised between at least three scenarios. In one, people are doubling down on control, neurotically trying to deny what is happening and hold off the change. Another scenario is more catastrophic, where the disruption has gone too far and collapse becomes inevitable. But a third scenario might be to expand capacity and learn to play a bigger game. This third scenario, I suggest, is where humanistic psychology has an important role to play. Addressing what amounts to the deep existential challenges of living in the interregnum and coping with the shift in civilizational assumptions from an industrial age to the digital age should, I suggest, be the mission of a 21st century humanistic psychology. This does not mean we stop doing what we do as clinicians and educators, but rather involves rethinking our work within the larger frame of cultural transformation and exploring how we might help cultivate a new psychology that are adapted for now and the future. In my view, humanistic psychology is supremely well-placed to become a transformative psychology. The founders explicitly explored how to facilitate higher levels of consciousness and members of this community have been on the trail of new forms of personhood since the beginning. In a famous talk to graduating students at Sonoma State University in 1969, Carl Rogers referred to the fact that in the turbulent culture of the 1960s, he saw a new kind of person emerging. They were members of the counterculture, whom he met in human potential labs, graduate programs, growth centers, cross-cultural and cross-racial encounters, and executive training. He called them persons of tomorrow. With amazing prescience, he wrote, the striking thing is that these persons will be at home in a world with no solid base, a world of process and change, in which the mind, in its larger sense, is both aware of and creates the new reality. In the year 2000, I was invited to joined 30 experts from multiple disciplines to form the International Futures Forum in St Andrews, Scotland. Our task was to develop new theory and practice that could support transformative innovation in a world too complex to either understand or control and to restore effectiveness in action. We took as our starting point in our research people and projects that appeared to be successfully navigating 21st century complexities not only surviving, but thriving. In the successful projects, and not all of them were, we met people who demonstrated a very high level of psychological literacy and their consciousness that was more expanded than the modern psychology that was aimed at in most 20th century institutions. They all had an abundance of the capacities acquired in the classrooms of the universities but they also demonstrated capacities that had been left behind by the Enlightenment and had little place in their official education. What became obvious was that participants in these organizations were a lot like Rogers' Persons of Tomorrow. They were empowered and comfortable in complexity, knew how to stay grounded even while flying through the air, were agile and relational and knew how to develop these capacities in others. They used qualitative, holistic, and systems approaches to knowledge gathering. They engaged in meditation, martial arts, body work, psychedelics, mindfulness, yoga, sports, practices that develop a far wider range of consciousness. A particular characteristic of these various activities is that they encourage psychological literacy and capacities that provide a transformative psychological framework for living in turbulent times. Let me share one example of what a transformative project looks like. In 2002, in Falkirk, Scotland, the city manager asked for help 
for the regional renewal project that had been prompted by the closure of the British Petroleum Refinery that was a major employer in the region. The city council already had a reasonable strategic plan, but the city manager and some of her staff knew their community was capable of something bolder and more transformative. A group from IFF went on a learning journey to several communities and organizations and listened to everyone who had some kind of commitment to solving the problems and inventing their future. We listened to their stories of hopes, disappointments, successes and failures. We listened for theoretical frames, metaphors, themes, emotions, imaginings and visions. We shared their sense of loss, despair and overwhelm. We didn't judge or teach. We modeled a way of being together that created psychological safety and a faith in the process. All factors identified by humanistic psychologists decades ago as ways to cultivate higher orders of consciousness and for creating conscious groups where the capacity of the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. And gradually, a new, far bolder version of the future emerged, and a new, bolder, more empowered psychology was evident. Importantly, this new vision did not come from the IFF members, but sprung up among the citizens as they engaged together with the reality of their situation. Once the collective imagination was fired up, the vision they conjured became impossible to ignore. And 10 years later, Falkirk and its entire region is a different place. You can find many more inspiring projects that are making a difference in fields from elder care, K through 12 education, public health, to policy and civil society on the IFF website. And IFF projects are just a small part of a larger movement of transformative innovation going on worldwide. It turns out that there are persons of tomorrow everywhere engaged in large and mostly small creative and effective initiatives addressing the multiple challenges humanity faces in the 21st century. Projects are springing up around the world as people decide to step outside limiting frames of industrialized and bureaucratized approaches to problem solving that seem less and less able to deliver what they were originally built for. Increasingly, citizens who are awake to the crisis bearing down and are motivated to make a difference are deciding to take the work of creating a new civilization into their own hands. From our experience in IFF, we've come to believe that the new consciousness is not developed theory first or in the classroom, at least not in the mainstream classrooms of modernity, but in concrete action projects addressing the messy complexities of the emerging world. In a recent book, environmentalist Paul Harkin reports on over 1 million NGOs, most of them small and based on values we would recognize as part of the humanistic story. To grow beyond the conceptual, cultural and existential crises that now threaten the survival of humanity and the rest of nature, we need to mobilize our most precious resource, ourselves, our compassion, our search for meaning and our unquenchable drive to create better worlds. Just as the modern mind emerged through participation in a secular world of science, machines, structured cityscapes, oppressive power hierarchies, people become persons of tomorrow by engaging fully in the complexities of today in order to build a 21st century culture. The universities for this 21st century psychology are found in transformative innovations occurring across the world. Working across disciplines with like-minded activists, transformative psychologists can help ensure that the expanded psychological capacities needed for life in liquid times are developed. The destructive forces of modernity will not just fade away. We will need to become hospice workers for the dying culture, continuing to offer help to those dehumanized by soulless algorithms, brutal bureaucracies, or burning out trying to hold up our failing systems. But we need to stop blaming and stigmatizing the victims of a world that is collapsing around them. And just as importantly, we must become midwives for a new world being born, 
supporting people as they take risks to leave the old frames behind to innovate, adapt, and transform. With our multiple approaches to learning, growth, coaching, and healing, transformative humanistic psychologists can serve as cultural leaders to create settings and practices that nurture awakened citizen leaders for the next stage of the human journey. It is time to turn our gaze outwards to a world that is teetering on the brink of catastrophe and promote a future-oriented psychology that speaks of justice, peace, and solidarity, not just for other humans, but for all the species of the planet. I think it's urgent that a transformative humanistic psychology offer its hopeful vision of human potential as an alternative to the current dominant narratives of despair, fear, and division. These transformative narratives already exist in the literature of our field and in the hearts and minds of those who are making a difference, actually listening to their clients and students. And along with the narratives, we can offer transformative practices. Humanistic psychology sells itself short when it compares its outcomes with those of CBT, for instance, as another form of psychotherapy. It has always been far more than that. So friends, we are in this together. The culture our descendants will inhabit will be formed by choices we make now. Let me close with some thoughts about how you might become a cultural leader, a person of tomorrow. First, start by going to the IFF website to find out that you're not alone and to find books, resources, and colleagues. You will also find a permission slip, which prompts some questions to ask yourself before you start and then start somewhere. If enough of us use our humanistic knowledge and creativity in the service of transformation, we just may find a way through this big mess, and in any case, learn to live more humanly in it. There is nothing to lose and everything to learn. So thank you.